pretty lucky here in the UK. There's not many places in the country where you'll find yourself without cell phone coverage. But I was reading a story online a few months back now about a chap that was in Dartmoor, which is where I'm at now. And he was uh, with his wife and family, strolling around on one of the tours, one of these, these big rocky outcrops. He slipped or tripped and long, long and short of it, broke his leg. Now, fortunately for him, the tour that he was on had cell phone coverage, so they were able to call for rescue, and a helicopter came and uh, took him out, and all was well, as could be. But it kind of led me on to thinking, what happens when I'm on my own? Now, maybe that could have been me on a tour, on a solo trip, and uh, no phone coverage. What, what do you do? Well, you're not going to be crawling anywhere with a broken leg, let's be realistic. So I looked around online and I found these, the, uh, the Fast Find Ranger Personal Locator Beacon. Let's get you a bit closer. So I reached out to the guys at this company and they very kindly uh, sent me one to, to have. Um, and it's brilliant. It's waterproof to 10 metres, it's got seven year battery life. Um, it will work anywhere on the planet anywhere. Right. Doesn't need a phone signal, literally you just open it up, there's a little aerial that shoots up and away you go and there's a few buttons to press. Now that would be pretty much it for this video because <laughs> there's not really much more I can tell you about it. Um, but the guys at the Fast Find Ranger PLB company sent me another one. This one here is a little bit like me, all right? It's a dummy. So I can demonstrate exactly what you do with these devices. I mean, it is pretty straightforward as you'll see in a moment. Um, I repeat, this one is a dummy, so I'm not setting anything off. I'm not doing anything I shouldn't. There's no transponder um, or receiver in here. So it's a, it's a fake unit. No one's gonna come and find me. There's a red tab on the end there, you're going to break that and you're going to pull it like that, release. See this fella here? That's it, there's your aerial, okay? You're going to sit upright like that. You'll notice on the unit there is an on button, you're going to press that and away you go. The following uh, information refers to this, the Fast Find Ranger PLB. This is um, a slightly older model, but actually it pretty much does everything that this one does. This one has one other unique feature which we'll go over in a minute, but I just wanted to show you how that pops out. Ooh, uh. So, the Fast Find Ranger will transmit a serialised ID which is linked to the owner to a satellite system which will pinpoint your location anywhere on the Earth's surface. So it should, become, it should be within minutes, but it can be up to 45 minutes depending on where the satellite is in relation to this bit here. The Rescue Coordination Centre, the RCC, then forwards the details of the emergency to the appropriate local search and rescue services. As I mentioned earlier, it's waterproof and you can submerse it up to 10 metres. It's got an inbuilt GPS and Galileo receiver that can pinpoint your location within a couple of meters. If you find yourself in a forest or perhaps a steep sided canyon, this can sometimes make it difficult for the GPS Galileo system to obtain a fix. If this happens, uh, the satellites can still pinpoint your approximate location and the unit's secondary homing transmitter, enabling the SAR teams to home in on your exact location once they're in the area. Um, this unit also features a flashing SOS light that can be used to attract attention. This uh, battery is a lithium power cell and it offers a minimum of 24 hours of continuous operation and the battery life is actually six years for a, a shelf life, so that will last six years. So as mentioned earlier, for optimum transmission, that antenna must be pointing upwards. There's no, no point sort of holding it like that or having it curled up in the pocket, it's not going to do it any good. It's not really designed to float in an upright position uh, and transmit when it's in water. It should be kept above water. And this GPS zone 
um, which you can see on the one that I've opened, there's a little marking there. This little marking here, it even says it, do not obstruct. So keep that free. Don't cover it up. So in high, in, in high winds, you would point the indicator light. On this model, it will, it will flash just here. This is a dummy unit, so you know it's just an indentation, but that's where it'd be. And you'd point that into the wind, and that will give optimum transmission. So once the indicator light is activated, it will start to flash. Um, when it flashes every two seconds, it indicates that it's activated and it's trying to hook up with the um, satellite fix. When it flashes every three seconds, that means that fix has been acquired. And a long flash, followed by three flashes every 50 seconds, means that the PLB has just transmitted a distress signal along with the current position. Now these units do come with a self-test. Now obviously it's a contained battery, it's a sealed unit, so you don't really want to be um, pressing it for the sake of it. And you only get so many tests, uh, you get 10 for a six year battery life. So I'm not gonna be demonstrating with you today because I don't want to waste uh, a valuable resource. You can understand that. But if you press and hold for three seconds, you'll get um, a short flash for the 121.5 megahertz homing signal and one long flash for the 406 megahertz test signal transmission. And then you'll get a sequence of flashes at the end, which will mean either your battery is full, medium, nearly dead or completely gone. You, as I said earlier, you'll get 10 tests permitted over the six years of battery life on that. So that's how you get your battery life. And then if you want to try a signal acquisition test, you can do that by pressing and holding for 15 seconds. And then the unit will start searching for a signal. And then you can test and see if it's actually working with regards to satellite. I'm not going to do that because it would worry me pressing that button and accidentally summoning help. It's 164 grams or 5.8 ounces and the size, the depth, uh, 36 mil by 50 wide and 112 long and that's 1.42 inches by 1.97 by 4.41. So it's it's like a, an old fashioned brick phone, maybe, maybe a little bit lighter, I don't have a problem with that. Um, you can replace, have the battery replaced in it, that has to be go off to their service centre. I don't have any information with regards to how much that would cost, but I imagine it's going to be a lot less than buying a whole new unit, right? The battery life, as I mentioned earlier, is six years. So if you divide that money up over the years, and even if you only use this on certain trips, you still, you know, I think I worked it out for my personal circumstances, it would probably cost me about 12 to 15 pound per trip over those years. So. It's not a great deal of money for a little bit of peace of mind. Hopefully it's something I'll never ever need to use. It does come with a warranty as well. You get your one year standard here in the UK. And if you uh, register it online, you get an additional four years. To work in minus 20 to plus 55 Celsius, that's minus 22 to 158 Fahrenheit. And it'll work up to 40,000 feet. Now there are a few limitations with this, and here's where I'll go on to the, the negatives if you like, if, if you consider them to be any. This won't float on its own, it comes with a, a little yellow pouch which I've conveniently left at home, and it needs to be in that pouch to achieve buoyancy. Now for me, I'm, if I'm going out on my canoe or something like that, it's very unlikely I'm going to be going on the sea for my personal circumstances, so I've always got cell phone coverage where I go on my canoe. But there is a buoyancy case. This one comes with the lanyard. That's very fine. That's no problem at all. So I attach that to my, my rucksack and that just sits in a rucksack pocket. So it's always with me in case I have a tumble. The battery type is a lithium magn magnanese. Magnanese? I can't say the word. Now, for me, the biggest problem with this is you won't be able to take that in your hand luggage or hold luggage on, on an aeroplane anytime soon. I've worked for 22 years in the aviation industry and the content and um, makeup of the battery on this will prohibit you bringing this onto an aeroplane and you would be stopped and that would be taken off you. Um, and these are around sort of the 180 to 220 pound mark, depending on where you buy them from. So it's a, an expensive unit to be taken off you at the airport in case you didn't know. So yeah, that's a, for me, 
that's a big negative, not being able to take that abroad. So the lithium metal battery with the lithium content exceeding two grams and total net quantity of 0.068. Now this is why it's classified as dangerous goods for transportation. It's a class nine, UN3091. Now those of you who work for an airliner will know what that means. Lithium batteries contain, contained in equipment. So it can't be carried, as I mentioned, on a passenger aircraft, either, either as a carry-on or checked-in baggage. It's got to be shipped and transported by air, but it would have to go as cargo and via a qualified dangerous goods shipper. And frankly speaking, it's not worth it. You just buy one when you're there. A lot of um, outdoor companies will let you hire these things now as well. Now, if you're transporting it by sea, it may be possible to carry the product in a private vehicle as a carry-on baggage, but you should check with your ferry company or shipping line before travel. Again, if it's not allowed, it can be shipped, but it has to go via cargo uh, with a qualified dangerous goods shipper. Naturally, in a private vehicle via road, these regulations don't apply at all. So you can pretty much do what you like. But if you were sending this by post to a friend to use, you should notify the courier or road haulier because it has dangerous goods in it, that lithium metal battery. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was of interest to you. It's something that's really different and I think the biggest comments I'm gonna get on this video is, oh, in the UK, you're never too far from a mobile phone reception. And you're right. And that's ultimately why most people won't bother buying this. But it's that odd time that you're in a remote area, in a remote place, something goes wrong. And when it goes bad, you'll be comforting to know that helps on its way. If you found this video of interest, if you don't mind leaving a like, that'd be very kind. And maybe even share it if you're feeling a little bit fruity. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.